What is up YouTubers and welcome back to a bitterly, bitterly cold Sunday budget bucket list car review. I finally got one. I finally did. If you've been a subscriber to this channel for a while, you'll know I've talked about getting one and I've been basically looking for a decent one for a while and I finally got a Seat Leon. Now, again, this came up relatively close to me, um, about 15 miles away. Oddly enough, uh, close to where my mum owns a caravan. This guy had this up for sale. I think he was a bit of a dealer dabbler, shall I would call him, because he had a few cars there, a couple of motorbikes, and he just had this on his driveway, along with a couple of MX-5s, that kind of stuff, and it was a decent price. I mean, he wanted 1850, I think it was 1895, something like that. Um, but then, of course, we get into the question of timing belts, because, of course, the Seat Leon petrols, and I think the diesels as well, actually, uh, the Mark II, as this is, they all have timing belts. Now, obviously, anybody who knows anything about cars knows that uh, around about 70 thousand miles you're going to need to replace them there was a change listed in the service book i think it was around about fifty-eight thousand miles which was all fine and dandy but it was five plus years ago so it's normally five years or seventy thousand miles whichever comes soonest now this is on ninety-two thousand miles which means by mileage it didn't need doing but by time wise because it was almost five six years i think uh is it is for these rather it needed doing. So I knocked him down a couple of hundred quid and I ended up getting it for around about 1,600 quid if memory serves. But I then had to go off and do the right thing because I was doing a bit of travelling up and down to Bristol. So I didn't want to take the chance. Um, and it's the first time I've ever done it, but I got the timing belt done by a local garage. If you're going to do this, you shouldn't be paying more than about 300 quid. Uh, I say that because there was a couple of garages I rang up who quoted me comedy prices. I mean, there was one garage who wanted more than the main dealer wanted to do it. Uh, because, um, his excuse for that was he's had some problems in the past uh, doing timing belts and he didn't want to take the risk so he wanted to cover his ass. I'm not quite sure if that even makes any sense if I'm honest but he wanted something in the order of 450 quid plus the VAT and I just kind of walked away from that one found a local garage they did it for 250 quid all in including the coolant and everything else so I know now I've got five years or 70,000 miles um, with this car relatively comfortably at least I know the timing belt's not going to go or at least it shouldn't. Um, so that's done. That obviously takes the price that I've spent on this car up a little bit. But I didn't buy this, as I don't buy any of the cars really, to make any money on. I bought this because I've been looking for a decent uh, set, Leon. I wanted the petrol. Um, again, if you've been a subscriber for a while, you'll know that uh, I basically don't particularly like um the diesels um i liked the proton but i didn't like the fact that, that was a diesel so i was looking specifically for a petrol and i'm pretty sure these mark twos they only actually do the 1.6 as a petrol or uh the cupra and the cooper r's which are two liters the only other two liters are the diesels so this is a 1.6 stylance um bit of an odd name because well i suppose it's quite stylish i mean the, the wheels are stock uh, set out wheels, but they were a little bit moody. The center caps were falling to pieces basically. Now, I try to find new center caps because if we go into here, you'll see what you actually do is you replace this as a whole unit. These little knobs here are stuck to this center cap. Trying to find those new is nigh on impossible. What I did manage to do, we'll go in again so you can have a look if you need to do this yourself. I managed to find these stickers. They come in a set of five, um, obviously assuming you've got a spare, I suppose. And that just sticks over the crusty bit underneath here. And as you can see, makes it look quite nice. The alloys, decent Nick. Um, and I think personally, they look pretty nice on the car. You know, I really think this would look so much nicer lower. If you took this down by 30, 40 mil, the stance would be so much nicer because it's actually got some decent wheels and tires you know they're quite fat and chunky so i think you could deserve it to do that now um, talking of tires and wheels as you can see very 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 good uh, hancock tires on there so i mean there's a few hundred quid's worth of tires what else have i done the usual um i've changed the light bulbs now i did what i normally do and i got them from argo city off ebay the h sevens I think these are two prong jobs and a couple of side lights and I also did the front fogs as well. well we'll stick those on so you can have a little look and see what they're all about because they might show better than they have done on previous videos I've done just bear with me a second oh there goes the radio right again just gives it a bit of a more of a modern feel at the front you know that kind of ice white um because they really were very yellow um on here now the first time uh 
this is rather the first time that I bought light bulbs from Argo City and one of them went within about a week. So I got hold of them and I said, look guys, um, I bought lots of bulbs off you. One of your bulbs has gone. They actually put me through the mill on it um, and <laughs> made me uh, explain what had happened. Did I take the foam off the bulb? Did I put it in right? Will my car take a hundred watt uh, bulbs and all this kind of crap? And in the end, they sent me a replacement, which was fair enough for them. But they shouldn't really have put me through all that crap just for a uh, you know a four quid bulb. I thought that was quite unfair to be to be honest. Um, right, anyway, so it's done. And uh, what else have we done? I put some on. I mean, the Peugeot 207 GT. I had them on. I've never fitted them myself, but I did with this. These wind deflectors. They're only about 25 quid a set. And again, I think it really kind of gives it a bit of a sporty stance. And obviously it's practical because you can keep the window down. You don't get covered in rain. And uh, it keeps some of the noise out. So I thought that was a nice little touch for 25 quid. I also, because I had a set at Leon in Greece when I was living there and it had chrome handles and I found a set of these. Now they sell on eBay for anything from 15 to 30 quid for a set of these. And bear in mind, there's only two handles because the rear handle obviously doesn't exist. You just kind of open that up like so. Um, but I found them from AliExpress and it was a set of four, which I'm imagining is a generic set because it must be a VAG set um, as in Vauxhall, uh, Volkswagen and Audi group. Um, set because they I imagine they fit all sorts of different cars not just the set Leon and so I've got a spare set effectively I put these on both sides and I've got another set at home because they set me a set of I think it was four and they look all right I think you know and they were about seven pound fifty instead of um, I think it was 20 quid off eBay so again Get onto, e uh, get onto eBay, see what the prices are, and then check it with places like AliExpress, uh, Fast Tech, you know, these Chinese places. I've never not had a package turn up. They've always turned up. Sometimes they've been a bit crap, but they will give you a refund or send you another set if there's any problems. Anyway, back to the car. As you can see, really, really nice looking car. I, I really, I wish I'd got one before. I mean, I've been talking about getting one for a long time. I finally got round to it because it was local and I'm lazy. And I really, really like this car. I, you know, as much as I liked it when I had it before. The only thing I would say is it's a bit slow. It's a 1.6. It doesn't... <sighs> You've got to rev it uh, to get anywhere. You know, it's not going to win any races, I don't think. I may, when I finally decide which car I'm going to keep for myself after all this, I may get the Cupra uh, or the FR or something like that because I really like the car, but I'd like it to have a bit more power. I might try, against my better judgment, I might try the TDI purely because it's a two litre diesel turbo and um, I imagine, excuse me, I imagine that'll go pretty quick compared to this, um, but I don't really want a diesel if I'm honest. Now another little thing I did, you may have noticed already, there is no aerial on the top, there's a shark fin. Now I was lucky enough to find one of these um, in pretty much the right colour for this car, so you, can, you know as long as you don't look too closely. I wanted to update it because the aerial itself was crap, it was falling to pieces, there was bits of crap falling off it and I was going to replace it anyway and I thought well for £2.50 again AliExpress, £2.50, took two weeks to get here, and you just screw it into the base that's already there. That effectively there is a cover. Um, it's all hollow underneath here, and you just stick it over the base as a, so you don't have to get in and take the lining out to get the old base off. You just put that one over the top. There's a little screw that goes into the original fixing, and it's done. A few people on the forum said they're crap, they don't get any reception, etc, etc. Not had a problem. I really have not had any problems whatsoever. The one thing I did do, because there's a curve in this roof, and again, they're not, this is a, a kind of a generic shark fin, so they're not made for this car. So there was a little gap just here, um, which was annoying me. So I got some silicon sealant from bathroom, stuff like that, put it all the way down here, rubbed it off a little bit, um, and that's fixed that. Because I didn't want the water getting in, because if the water gets trapped in there, it could cause rust issues uh, on the roof. Um, or just stop the aerial working altogether, and I just didn't want any dramas. Um, it's, it doesn't look brilliant because of the silicon, you can see it more so on this side. But, you know, you're never going to be staring at it, so it's not really an issue. Um, Space-wise, what do we got? A fairly good amount of space. You've got uh, twin split seats here and a massive boot, which I will show you even though it's got a fan in the back, as you can see, my number one fan there. Um, as I said, dual split seats, good room. You know, a really decent amount of space there. Uh, the one thing I have noticed which annoyed me pretty much straight away was the condensation in this rear light. doesn't seem to be too much anywhere else. I mean, bearing in mind I've just washed it. Uh, but it is in that one there. Um, 
I could get a new one, as in light lens, or I could just dry it out with a hairdryer and then tint it slightly. That would take away some of the obvious um, kind of condensation issues there. I might, I might not. Uh, it doesn't bother me when I'm sitting in the car, of course. The other thing, as usual, I painted the brake calipers front and back just because I think you know with the red in the middle of the new stickers for the uh, center caps as you can see it kind of you know gives it a bit of more of a stancy feel uh, sporty stance rather um what else let's have a little jump inside see what we can oh it's so cold you wouldn't believe it uh, we've got this second beast from the east oh, we're coming in to England at the moment so it's bitterly cold now then inside um it's not the most exciting place to be, if I'm honest, but it's practical. You've got your air con. Um, if we start it, uh, well, I'll start it up. I'll get the ignition going, turn this radio off. And obviously you've got your heater controls down there, standard stereo. You can upgrade this, but you need to buy this entire fascia, but they do do them color matched, which is nice. So effectively you could buy a fascia with a double din in there, uh, touch screen, sat nav, all that kind of stuff, if you wanted to. I'm not gonna bother. I think this is perfectly adequate, um, and I'm too old to really care about it, if I'm honest. The dash I like, it gives you kind of this ripple, to almost like a carbon fibre effect all over the dash, which I think is rather cool. I like that. Um, bearing in mind, again, this is just the Stylance. This isn't the BTTC or the FR or the Coupe or anything like that, and you get quite a lot with it. We've got cruise control as well, which the guy didn't mention when I bought the car. Um, fog lights front and back. There's all manner of little settings here, if we can just zoom into there as you can see you've got that which i don't know what it is i think that's how many hours this car's driven but i could be wrong uh maybe it's been reset but it's 70 hours i imagine at ninety four thousand miles 70 hours doesn't seem long enough anyway uh miles per gallon uh, another miles per gallon master you run out i'm not sure what that is if i'm honest must be a trip and more parts, but so many settings that I don't know. There's the, uh, you can see how cold it is now. One degree outside there, and then obviously a timer. It took me ages to work that out, so I wanted to show you guys. Um, again, this kind of rippled carbon effect goes everywhere. Um, you've got four electric windows, all controlled from the front. Five-speed box, six would have been nice. Another thing he didn't mention is you've got heated mirrors, uh, as you can see here by this little symbol, and also retractable. I didn't know that until I did it by accident the other day, and I kind of went like that and they all did that, which I thought was bloody fabulous. Nice little touch. Only the second car I've ever had that on, so I was well chuffed with that. Heated front and rear screens as well, which was quite nice. The other thing I did was change the interior bulbs because I often do that to some LEDs. Uh, this one here, uh, I have no idea what's going on with that because I put an LED bulb in there and it doesn't work the way it should, as in it stays on with the door closed and it, um, goes off when the door's open, which is completely asked about it, which I may look into. I'm going to do these back ones as well at some point, I think. But again, as you can see, ooh, sorry, I got in the way of the lens. Um, decent place, you know, it's not leather, but you wouldn't want leather in a car like this, I don't think. Um, it needs a bit of a polish because it's been so bloody cold. I haven't actually kept it clean, but the one good thing, well, one of the many good things about a silver car is that it doesn't show the dirt as much as some other colours. Uh, Gunmetal grey tends to be the best colour for that, so you don't have to keep bloody washing it. But, I mean, I've just thrown a bucket of water over it now. And again, the little things that I've done, the uh, change of the bulbs at the front, the new centre caps, the painted calipers, the wind deflectors, the shark fin aerial, the chrome covers for the door handles here. Um, these little things, I think, have set the car apart from some others you might see out there. And I also changed the rear wiper to a more modern one as well. Um, so I just think it, you know, it looks a little bit more sporty than perhaps it was when it left the factory. In the respect that it's just a 1.6 petrol stylance um, and it's got a few gadgets inside and now it looks a little bit sexier on the outside. Um, as I said, I mean, I've got no plans to sell this as yet because, I mean, it's taken me five, nearly six weeks to make this video, which I do apologise. I do like to do one once a month. Um, but I wanted to give this a fair chance and I really like it. You know, I've got no reason to sell this. I've done the timing belt. Um, it's had an oil change. It's got full service history. 93,000 miles, nearly 94,000 miles. 
and I've got no reason to sell this car. You know, I just think it's it looks nice, it drives nice. Um, one thing I did want to mention, actually, before I forget, is these wind deflectors. The one thing you might notice, if you're thinking about getting them, I mean, this was really, really quiet inside, as you would expect from a German car, really, really quiet with the windows up. Uh, that changed as soon as I put the wind deflectors in, because these ones are the ones that go in the window channels, which means the windows don't ever go right up maximum uh, to the top of the window anymore because of this bit of plastic, effectively, uh, that sits up here. Um, so you do hear a bit more wind noise. I noticed that straight away. I asked a friend of mine who's got a Seat Ibiza, a newer one, and he said, no, no, it's exactly the same as mine. As soon as I put them in, I get much more road noise. It's a compromise you make, I guess. It looks sexy, it's practical, but if you do a lot of miles on the motorway and you want real, real quiet, don't put them on because you won't get that anymore. You know, it will be louder. You know, not monstrously, but you'll hear more road noise and more wind noise with the deflectors on. But I guess the difference there is that you can open the window a bit. Uh, because you've got the deflectors on it's not going to blow you about everywhere so as I said a bit of a compromise really in that respect there are a lot of other things I could do to here you can get these badgeless grills um, you can get different uh, you can get front splitters Sorry, I've got chewing gum in my mouth. Um, you can get front splitters from the uh, the Coopers and the R's I think and the FR's which you can just bolt straight onto here Again, they look quite nice. Um, you can get carbon fiber wing mirrors. Um, I think the color match is probably better, really, in that respect. I think, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those rear windows have been tinted. Ever so slightly, you know, not limo black, and I don't know why, but someone's tinted them. I'm pretty sure of that, because they're definitely darker than the front. Which, again, nice little touch. Maybe that's the stylence value added uh, kind of package uh, uh, there on that. I have no idea, to be honest. But as I said, my plan will be, um, if I do sell this, which, if I'm honest, I probably will sell this. I won't make any money on it because they don't really go for much more than, say, a couple of grand on a 2005 with 100,000 miles, which is pretty much this. I should get around about two grand for it because of the extras on it and the fact that it's had a new timing belt. I can't really see any problem getting that, so I'll get my money back, uh, which is always nice. And I will get another one. I'm 95% sure I'll get another one, but I want to try the FR, maybe the TDI, which <sighs> I see the practicality and it's quicker, um, but I don't like diesel, so I probably lean towards the FR. If I can get an FR with a BTTC body kit on it, that's, I'd like that because they do look really, really sexy. Um, a new one. We'll just see what happens at the end of the day. Um, I will have another video coming up, I would imagine, in the next two or three weeks of a bike. I bought another bike as well. Uh, very local again. Um, I, I won't give you too much away now. Um, you'll see it in the next video. But if you're into your bikes, look, look out rather in the next two or three weeks for a new video on a spring slash early summer project that I've got going on that I've been working on for the last two or three weeks. Uh, it's nice. It's very nice. Uh, one of my favourite um, brands, shall we say, a bike. So that might give you uh, a little hint there. Anyway, look out for that. Any questions, comments, if you've got one of these, I'm always interested, as you know, to see what you've done, uh, hear what you've done, any problems you might have had, any warnings you might have. Um, but as I said, any questions about any of the things that we sort of discussed today, drop it in the comments below and I will do my utmost to answer them. Uh, again, sorry for the delay, but it's here now. The Seat Leon 2005 with 94,000 miles. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, guys. Take care now.